Ballots for Bernie, another edition of our live stream here on Sunday afternoon, coming to you from Berkeley, California at Next Space. This evening we have Holly Mosher with us, documentary film producer from Los Angeles. She's going to talk to us about her film, and we are going to also talk about her experience as a ballot count observer in L.A. County, and we're also going to talk about her work on Prop 59. Mm -hmm. Excited, so excited to have you here. Thank you. So Holly, <laughs> every one of our guests has emotional hook, an emotional hook that erected their backbone, put mm -hmm. their feet in the street. Okay to help us ensure that every ballot is counted as cast. And mm -hmm. I know that you've got um, a heart-wrenching story um, okay. that puts you on the path um, yeah. as a docu documentary film producer. Talk to us about your film. Well, first of all, um, so I wasn't on the street until this last year when I saw what happened, because I was actually producing Free For All from Los Angeles while it was being made in Ohio. We started in 2006. So John Ennis, the director, was very much on the street. He actually helped um, found Video the Vote, mm -hmm. which is something everybody can get involved in this year. Um, and with the new technology, people can just put it on Facebook and hashtag Video the Vote. Um, so I wasn't on the ground until this year. But what I learned, um, so in 2006, we started making a film because 500 no, $50 million of the workers' comp fund was being, Noe ended up doing some time for it. Mm -hmm. So um, And remind us who Tom mm -hmm. Noe is. Well, he was the one sifting the money into the Republican mm -hmm. Party. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny, he had started as a rare coin dealer and had worked his way up with pay-to-play mm -hmm. politics and was able to funnel that money um, for a purpose. Any snake oil salesman? Yeah, right? yeah. Wow, um, wow. So that was, uh, yeah, very disturbing to see. So um, the director's father had been with the auditing team and had seen, like, where all this money had gone. And so he's like, I think it would be fascinating mm -hmm. to go to Ohio and follow this money trail. Mm -hmm. So he spent a lot of time on the ground in Ohio and our first rough cut was two and a half hours, and we had all this stuff around election integrity because he was following what had happened in Ohio. You know, 2006 is right after 2004, mm -hmm. and so things were becoming unearthed, and he was talking to, like, Bob Fetrakis, who I'm sure is, mm -hmm. has probably been on the show. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Bob, if you're watching. Yeah. He and, was um, our MC for our conference. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, just being there, he was really in the thick of it. And so the first rough cut... We realized we had two films. We had Free For All about how elections get stolen and the election integrity and what happened with the computer systems in Ohio. We also then ended up backtracking and telling what had happened in 2000 in Florida. And it was the same thing with Katherine Harris being, you know, the Secretary of State and being the head of the Republican Party for the state. Mm -hmm. And so then Kenneth Blackwell was the same point person in Ohio. And then... In 2004, you know, Mike Connell was doing the computer systems and also did all these GOP computer mm -hmm. sites and promised Bush the vote. And, and, and you he can, delivered. Yeah, you, so you can learn all about that in the film. It's free for all, and it's at saveourelections.org. Saveourelections.org. The whole film is online for free, just like we had done. We finished it in 2008 and put it out just in time for the election because we're like, this is going to happen again. And unless there's enough people, unless the, the win is so big, you know, then it's, it's safe. Right. But if it's close, if it's neck and neck, mm -hmm. they can really rig it because they can steal, you know, a couple hundred thousand here, a couple hundred thousand there, you know, 10,000 here. So when it's a landslide, there's not the concern. Mm -hmm. But when it's, when it's close, that's when we have to really be concerned. And then personally, I got involved... Um, I was seeing what was happening this year, mm -hmm. and when I saw what happened in Brooklyn with 126,000 people not getting to vote, and then when I saw what happened in Phoenix and hearing the same stories that we had seen in our film, so I actually went out on voting day and was videoing the vote in L.A., and um, I was talking to people who, you know, we went, we know, you know, hotbeds near universities all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, sure enough, I was hearing complaints that were happening right outside of UCLA, 
and students were having a really hard time, even though they were sent to go to a polling place, they'd get there and unless they fought, they were being turned away. Like, you know, it took one girl 20 minutes. And then um, one polling place wasn't even open till afternoon. Three, you know, I ran into a gentleman, and it was his third time coming back to vote, and he finally got to vote after 12 p.m. We yeah. heard stories about yeah. that all over yeah. the state with our Ballots for Bernie initiative. Yeah. It was, it was, um, it was, we were dumbfounded. Yeah. We were expecting issues. Yeah. But just the overwhelming yeah. number. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the numbers were yeah. shocking. And then this year, what I thought was new was people's party being flipped. Like, that had not been happening before. And I first heard it when I was, I watched the whole Arizona, you know, um, city they had a, a a meeting where everybody came wow. up and spoke and it's like you know even somebody who worked for you know was one of the legislators saying you yeah, know County, right? yeah it's like yeah their votes you know their parties were flipping and then in the primary of course that matters now we don't have to worry about that problem mm -hmm. for november but in the primary you know i've always i've always been independent i have not been in either party, and I get furious at how many people can't even vote in the primary for president. Yeah. And then now what I saw, um, looking at the numbers overseeing the ballots for Bernie in Los Angeles, we had a team of people that were going to Norwalk every day. And Julie Tyler. That was a, that was a monumental effort you oh guys carried out. Oh, my and, gosh. And, you know, if, <laughs> if I had an applause machine, I would put it on right now. Because was, you definitely deserve a uh, standing ovation for the work that you guys did down there. Thank well, you so thank much. thank you. And Julie Tyler, she was really showing up the first mm -hmm. few days and, and going hard. And she happened to be there one day, and she's just like, they're remaking these ballots, and the first bubble seems to be getting remade without it. And what they were doing is the computer was saying if somebody was an NPP, non-party preference for California. So I live in California now, so I'm happy as an independent voter that I can cast a vote for president in selected party choices. Mm -hmm. I had actually lived in New York when I was first voting, and so I couldn't mm -hmm. vote in the primary as an NPP. So like, that's one thing I think is so broken with the system, it's like, the presidential race for the United States is such a big position. Everybody should be able to vote in the primary because this is like, you know, we people often say it's the leader of the, the world, like in a way. We, we are such an influential country. <laughs> American sure. exceptionalism yeah. definitely yeah. <laughs> does not come through in our elections uh, process. Yeah. So, Lots um, of work to do. So, you know, I was actually excited when I moved to California and got to vote in the primaries because I've always been a voter but I've never been in any party. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was happy. But what we saw was that NPP voters, which is now like over 23% of California. It's a quarter of our voters, so, yeah. Yeah, and um, so they were had to ask for a crossover ballot. So if they were given a Democratic ballot or, a, you know, a Libertarian or an AI, I think those were the three parties, um, if they were not given the crossover version, in Norwalk, they were actually erasing wow. the presidential ballot. And um, I remember when we got that. I remember the day we mm -hmm. got that information yeah. on ballots for burning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we had 800 people chiming in. I mean, was, the, the yeah. threads would go on forever. Yeah. yeah. And then I was actually there watching another day when it was yeah. people thought they were registered as one party mm -hmm. and they were registered as another. I don't understand if it was always, you know, sometimes people just think they're one party or not. But it still broke my heart watching. Yeah. Then they're like, okay, legally, technically, this these, sh these ones should be being mm -hmm. erased. But I'm like, that's just wrong. Yeah. I just sat there for a half an hour watching them do ballot after ballot after ballot. And I didn't care which way it was going. I'm just like, that. somebody made a, t took the time and it's wanted to vote. vote for president in the primary and it was being erased be based on technicalities and yeah. based on the way our system pushes people out and the party system. I just, yeah. I'm not a fan of the party system. I think it's used to divide and conquer our country. The way the media uses it, us versus them, you know, left versus right. It's like, we all have so much more in common than we have difference. And the, and the, our elections process is 
purposefully convoluted. Yeah. And I think that mm-hmm. that's something that we've all realized here yeah. in the state of California. Yeah. We're fond of saying that we've got 58 county chaos. Because yeah. we have a different system of checks and balances yeah. and each protocols place. and rules in yeah. each county. Yeah. And yeah. then how can you know? It's like right. So that was that was really heartbreaking. And then so then the real clincher is that all these NPP voters vote by mail. There were over four hundred thousand NPP voters in LA County. That's more people voting that than in many states. Yeah. Just, no, that's more than many states. Yes. Voters, yeah. just L.A. County, because we have 5 million registered voters yeah. out of the 18 million in California. We are the largest yeah. voting district in the country. So 400,000 NPP, neither party, vote by mail. They had one extra step to vote, which to me just seems so wrong, if they wanted to vote for president. They had to ask to be sent an extra piece of paper. How many people do you think did that? Out of those 400,000, how many do you think took that extra step? 7%. So that just shows you how difficult it was. I I call those super voters, like Mm -hmm. that they actually would take the extra step, get it in time. Because like I know, I get my thing. I'm like, oh, I'm going to look at that, you know, the day I need to. Mm -hmm. I don't read it all that far ahead of time. So those people probably didn't find out with enough time to know that they needed to do this extra step. And so this information should yeah. have been on public. It should have been on PSAs all yeah. over the state Everywhere. months out in advance. Yeah. Because the state account, this the SOS, um, Alex Padilla knew in January. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There were a million new registrations, mm-hmm. and we knew. Yeah. We knew who those people were registering mm-hmm. to vote for. Yeah. Overwhelmingly. Yeah. So they knew they needed to be ready. They mm-hmm. knew that a lot of these people that were registering as NPP voters yeah. um, were <clears throat> registering in what they thought was an independent party. Yeah. And a lot of these were brand new voters. Yeah. And they they deserved as U.S. Yeah. citizens to be presented with the information to allow them to yeah. cast their vote intelligently. Exactly. And we and asked that didn't them, happen. And you we know, know that that yeah. purposefully didn't mm-hmm. happen. Yeah. We mm-hmm. saw, when we saw that they were erasing the the presidential ballot, if they had been given the wrong ballot, they actually then went back and started counting those and retroactively counted them all. And I said, well, why can't can't you do the same thing with the NPP vote by mail? And they just said no. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. that, you know. But we can and not either, to mention the yeah, media the day before right. when no news had happened on Monday and suddenly they're calling the win. It's like, I mean, I... I had a friend crying that morning, just being like, oh, history is made. She's like, I was like, what happened? And she's like, I know, nothing happened. And I, I'm like, you're being so manipulated by the media yeah. to think that something, nothing happened on Monday. Mm-hmm. There was no new vote. There was no new information that the media would suddenly claim a win. And my doctor, the next day, I went on Wednesday, and I said, oh, you know, did you vote? And she's like, well, I heard it was a done deal, so I just, yeah. I didn't. Go and I said, you know, I said, well, what happened on Monday? How was the news made on Monday? And she's like, oh, that's right. And she's like, that's icky. That's yeah. icky. And I was yeah. like, yeah. And she, that's a very highly educated woman, mm-hmm. and just too busy to like. And she kept saying, like, you know, I I talked to her about politics all the way up on my appointments going in, and then, and I'd been telling her the stuff, and she's like, oh, you were right with all this stuff that's happening. So you know, we can be yeah. disheartened. Yeah. We can uh, fall apart, mm-hmm. or we can redetermine that we're going to get it right. Mm-hmm. And we know if we get it right in California, what happens in California goes out to the rest of the country. Yes, that's very interesting. So as disheartened as I was after the primary, I am now reinvigorated mm-hmm. to get it right. Yeah. And it's been such an exciting process meeting so many people on the EI trail Mm -hmm. working to see that this vision comes to full fruition and that we demand every ballot as counted as cast in the state of California. And we've got so many great people like you working Mm -hmm. on so many different levels. Your filmmaking, um, what we're going to be able to share with our viewers at home when you watch... um, Mm -hmm. Free for all. Free for all. Yeah. Free yes. for all. So we have the two yeah. films. We have the one on elections getting stolen is free for all. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, election fraud, folks, not voter fraud, election fraud. Let's tell fraud. our folks about that, that website one more time. So saveourelections.org. Mm-hmm. You can see both Free For All and Pay to Play, our other film that talked about the money it takes to run for office. And that, the problems there, are both on saveourelections.org for free until election day. Yeah. 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 So Holly, again, I want to thank you so much mm-hmm. for your hard work as a BCO. <laughs> we came up with we came up with so many anachronisms, okay. right? And so many um, so many short forms uh, in this process. Um, some exciting things that we've been talking about here. Um, one of our um, ballots for Bernie members, Allison Bluviak, has mm-hmm. come up with a great idea um, to have a. Um, Ballot Count Observer Bill of Rights. Oh, isn't that exciting? Okay, yeah. yeah, isn't that exciting? All right. Um, so that could be some legislation that we see our okay. ballots for Bernie group working yeah. on in the future. Yeah. yeah. And then also ensuring the vote. Like I, you know, I have a little graphic here. It's on our Money and Politics A to Z guide. I mean, it's just how many states are suppressing voting mm-hmm. and the voting ID laws, and and you'll see that in the film. I know you'll also see it in Greg Palace's new film. Right. <laughs> but right. see it Folks, Greg Palace in our old yet. film. You but haven't seen that still yet. Relevant. It's the best. It's Greg Greg Palace's new film is the best democracy money can buy. Yeah. And uh, this film debuts have already been mm-hmm. in L.A. and San Francisco, um, and I think we're going to see it come out in um, theaters nationwide soon, right? I imagine. Yeah. 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 Good yeah stuff. He's got a good following. Yeah, so. it's good stuff. Yeah. We actually saw um, the film debut in uh, in Oakland. Okay. At Lake Merritt, at the, oh, at the Grand Lake Theater, yes. and it was packed. Yeah. I mean, there was not a there was not an empty seat in the house. It That's was a amazing. good thing. People yeah. care about this now. So we finished Free for All in two thousand eight. Sadly, the information is still completely relevant. You know, there's just a few new problems now. But, and our film is funny and entertaining, so it it helps soften the blow of that always disgust, helps, right? How disgusting yeah, the system is. Helps. So we've got a lot of humor in there, <laughs> thankfully. Um, mm-hmm. But it's shocking. Back then, when we finished, nobody believed that this stuff was happening. You know, like Greg Palace was writing articles, and, mm-hmm. you know, Brad Friedman was right. there, and... Um, well, we know what the establishment you know, likes to RFK do. had written his they article. They like to reframe the debate mm-hmm. and to label us as conspiracy theorists. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's what the Republicans did. Yeah. And now we're seeing the Democrats do it as well. Yeah. You know? Um, and... You know, in 2008, election integrity was a big issue for President Obama. Mm -hmm. Um, You can run, but you can't hide. YouTube will find you. (laughs) We've got video (laughs) clips that we're putting on blast all over the Internet right now of Obama actually talking about leading up to the 2008 election, how important it was going to be to have Mm -hmm. precinct monitors, actually lawyers on the ground. We have uh, some volunteers that work with us that were actually lawyers that that were lawyers that were sent out all over the country to be precinct monitors to be there right. to monitor what was happening with the vote to help mm-hmm. voters if they were in um, you know a challenging situation right. and to demand that the, the election um, code is followed right and it made a huge difference right. in the in the vote count for yeah. Obama that is how he got such mm-hmm. a wide margin yeah of and votes. Hillary also had legal yeah. teams in Ohio and Wisconsin leading up to this you know, preparing that there could be things happening. And now we see a complete 180 Mm -hmm. where the entire Democratic establishment is calling Trump a complete liar for talking about election rigging. We know Trump is, Donald Trump is a master at taking a grain of truth right, and and building a, a huge fabrication around right. it. Yeah, because in he's person... He's very good at that. He's a master in, of yeah, it, Yeah, in-person voter fraud is so infrequent. It's like, you know, as Greg Powell said in Free For All, like, it's hard enough to get people to vote once, like, to get them to come out twice, <laughs> right. like, really... Right. And, um, you know, it does happen. It's funny. I'm from Milwaukee originally, and there was a guy in Shorewood mm-hmm. who was found, I think, guilty of it going five times and voting. You know, like, there are those crazy people yeah. occasionally that do is that. There, is there, but it's is there less... an OCD diagnosis for that? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Votitis? What is it? You I know don't what know it? what you would call that, but it's crazy. And, um, mm-hmm. of course, you know, there's an occasional case of that. But right. like they say, it's you know you're more likely to be hit by lightning exactly. than to have it. I mean, they're at, the, at the end of free for all, we talk about the attorney generals, the whole hunt mm-hmm. to find this 
in-person voter fraud. And the attorney generals that were brought on by Bush, they're like, we can't find it. We're not finding it. The attorney, you know, I can't remember their names, but they're in the very end of the film. So watch and you will see. It's like, they're like, we don't have these cases. It's just in person, not happening. But in the computer systems or in, you know, the voter caging that they did in Florida where, you know, they scrubbed the rolls. And then I want to know how are these people's votes flipping or party party preference flipping across the country. I mean, I heard people, you know, up here in Northern California. I heard people in Brooklyn, like cases across the entire country of their they're like, I've always been a Democrat, or I've always been a Republican, or I've always been no party. It's like, mm-hmm. how are these votes flipped? Like, that's what we need to be looking right. into. That exciting, scary. exciting, exciting case that just um, uh, uh, ruling in a case in um, Arizona. Um, our good friend John Brakey, oh, who good. was here. Oh, Okay, right, I haven't, I haven't kept up well. in the latest. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, the lawsuit was to get the ballot images. Um, available to have the ballot images available for um, people like ourselves, so mm-hmm. integrity activists, to be able to go back and actually count the vote if we wanted to. Um, there was an issue, of course, with privacy, right? So mm-hmm. the uh, name of the voter had to be um, is not disclosed. But okay. People that want to um, that have their ballot stuff, they have their number. They can go back and get their friends together, sit down, and and be able to view these ballot images online together. Wow. Yeah, that's exciting. Okay. You get enough people involved, and you know you can see how those uh, how that could unfold, right? Right. So um, that ruling just came. The judge just um, just um, you know allowed uh-huh. the case to move forward, and that. So the crucial step was that the ballot images were about to be, the ballots were about to be destroyed. Okay. The okay. same thing in Ohio. Right, they were right, supposed right, right. to save those and ballots. so the crucial um, part in this case is that the ballots have to be saved now from, I think it's like 27 months out that they okay. have to save them. Right. So, of course, the next step in the case is going to be to move forward to actually view Okay, ballots. and but I'd love to see them in paper, yeah, not yeah, on a computer yeah. screen. You know. So what we, you know, what we, what we have here is a situation that you know, scientifically, we cannot say that the election was rigged because we can't count mm-hmm. the ballots. Right. When we can count the ballots, when we can do a one mm-hmm. percent. Um, hand-counted paper ballot audit right. um, that we can depend on, right? Yes. That they're the actually going to sample. Audit was off. Yeah, where they're, that they're was where they're actually going to sample mm-hmm. ballots from all the ballots that were cast. Yes. you know, yes. not leave out all the vote by mail. Right, right? exactly. <laughs> leave out all yeah, the provisional exactly. ballots. Um, then we can we can get to this redundancy in the system that we need mm-hmm. as a system of checks and balances. Yes, exactly. So right we now, all want it to be fair. Right, right now, this is, should, yeah. should be fair. Right now, that paper ballot audit is a suggestion. Yeah. And it needs yeah. to be state law. Yeah. Yeah, it should just yeah. be, it should just happen automatically. We've got a lot mm-hmm. of work to do, don't we, Helen? A lot <laughs> oh, of work. Boy. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being in the trenches with you, sister. So let's, let's move on uh-huh. to some exciting work you're doing with Prop 59. Tell okay. us about it. Well, since I've been so involved with the films, you know, Free For All and Pay to Play, um, Democracy's High Stakes, which we followed money in running for office and then, you know, just how the money corrupts the systems across the spectrum. It's like whether you care about the environment, whether you care about criminal justice, whether you care about, you know, sensible gun laws, Mm -hmm. it's the money from the lobbying affecting all, you know, why are our representatives not representing us and getting the changes that we want? And same with these privatized election systems. They're privatized. This is a. This should be in the public good. It's a public service. It's very important that it stays in the public, because otherwise, all this stuff is top secret information. So if you care about EI, you need. We need to stop having privatized. You know, step one. Right? <laughs> yeah. So um, as a result, um, I have after make, finishing pay to play. I just. I always like to do a bit of activism. I call myself. You know activist and filmmaker so I liked with each film I like to do some activism and here in California I partnered up with Money Out Voters In who's down in Los Angeles and they were working on originally you know getting a proposition on the California ballot 
to overturn Citizens United. And of course it won't be binding because it's California saying this for the rest of the country. But back in 1892, we had a voter instruction, which is just what this is. And in 20 years, we had a constitutional amendment, the 17th Amendment, that said that senators had to be elected, not appointed. So the, vo the first voter instruction that led to an amendment was also about money and politics corrupting the system because the people that were appointed were the ones with the money interests who were, you know, just getting elected to, or put into the Senate and doing their own bidding what they wanted. And so we cleaned that back up then in the progressive era. And that was the time of the robber barons initially. Yeah. And we did away with that historically. So we're just, you know, repeating history. We are calling for a constitutional amendment here in California. Um, two other states have done it on the ballot, Montana mm -hmm. and Colorado. So you see that it is a nonpartisan issue. Almost everybody agrees, unless you're one of the people benefiting from the money in politics right. the way it is. So um, we're, we're hopeful that the people of California, you know, everywhere this has been on the ballot, it has won. Um, often there's been over about 700 municipalities that have called to overturn Citizens United. And we've had um, 17 state legislatures already call for it. So California has already called for it. Um, New York just joined us in June. So across the country, 17 states. That's like... That's a big progress in less than seven years, mm -hmm. 17 states. But so to have it third, on... That's a third of the country. Yeah, so to have it on the ballot, though, to have the people, because if I would ask most Californians, do you think California has done anything to call for a constitutional amendment to get corporate money out of the election systems? People would say no. So it needs to be on the ballot to have this conversation. And just like Prop 8 was on the ballot less than 10 years ago, now gay marriage is law of the land because we had that conversation here in California and we need to have that conversation across the country. And people say, oh, constitutional amendment, that's so hard. But 100 years ago, we had the yeah. 17th. We've had 10 yeah. since then. Yeah. Yeah. Go figure. We've it had can't a be lot so hard. of constitutional amendments. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's not so Enough hard to as fill they, a civics class, yeah, right? Yeah, they like yeah. to tell you, oh, it's so hard. But we've had 10 since that one. Yeah. And it's been a minute, right? Are you so ready to yeah, work on a constitutional we, amendment, That's Holly? all I'm working I'm on I'm ready now. to work on a constitutional amendment. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to amendment. see one for voting rights. <laughs> I'd love to make sure we see one that, you know, mm -hmm. speech is speech. Mm -hmm. Money is volume of speech, not speech itself. Mm -hmm. Corporations are clearly not people. You know, there can still be rights that corporations have, but not human rights, not the same rights that we have. Now, I want to say that was a yeah. <laughs> Yugoslavian um, president, and I may be wrong about that, um, that said that what we have in the United States and our political process is a system of legalized bribery. Yeah. And that is exactly know, that's what who our said lobbying, it, but that's what we have. That's exactly what our lobbying yeah. process is yeah. in this country. It's legalized yeah. bribery. Yeah, since the Citizens United decision, it's like we can't spend unlimited amounts in, the, in our elections, but corporations can. And of course, corp and Brad Friedman says, you know, so well in our film, it's like, who has more money, you or Walmart? <laughs> you see the map of all the Walmarts across the country. <laughs> right. I think they have more money than I do. Right, and we're so, la and we're laughing like... to keep them crying here, right? You know, because yeah. as little guys here, you know, on a shoestring mm -hmm. bug budget, yeah. most of what we do as grassroots activists yeah. is money out of our own pocket. Yeah. You know, nobody's yeah. funding us. You know, that'd be yeah. great. You know? Yeah. Um, and if anybody out there wants to fund me or Holly, we will take your money. <laughs> believe me. Now you gotta be, you gotta be on our train, okay? You gotta be going in our direction. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, this is hard work. Yeah. Um, but what we've learned through Bernie's campaign is that when we come together, yeah, there's nothing that we cannot accomplish. Exactly. And we change the political landscape. Yeah. In not only numbers coming out to rallies, mm -hmm. not only vote for a, um, a an independent um, challenger, yeah. but in raising money. Yeah. In March, yeah. we broke all historical records yeah. for hits for um, presidential um, candidates on either side yeah. of the fence, yeah. raising forty six million dollars yeah. yeah. at an average donation of yeah. twenty seven. No corporate money. We can not do it. Yeah. We money. can do this. Yeah. We can do this. Yeah. Uh, we can mount these exactly. initiatives. We can change the Constitution. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel more hopeful now than ever because before this, like, you know, the election stuff, I mean, I felt like no, you know, 
nobody cared about it. And with the money in politics, it's like I just felt like outside. But seeing Bernie run, I like would go to these stadiums yeah. full of people. I'm like, there's millions of us. Okay. I'm not alone. We're not alone. We are here. And I think it's like they'll actually regret all that happened because it would have been much easier just to, you know. This has live. given us this has given us a myriad of t- <laughs> and a not have all of us. This has given us a cornucopia of issues to bite into, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is pretty good stuff. Um, you know, we are here, we're not going anywhere, and we're, we're gonna be louder going than ever. I, I yeah. always use uh, anger to fuel my creativity. <laughs> you know, I can't remember the BB the BBC um, journalist that said the thing about these Bernie Sanders supporters uh-huh. is not that they're not going down without a fight. It's that they're not going, we're down, not going down, period. Yeah. <laughs> and folks, we're not going down, uh-huh. period. <laughs> I know that. And we're um, young. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we are. Average, yeah, we are. I mean, yeah. I'm, older, I, I'm no. young at heart with this gray hair, I gotta tell you. So, I'm not a millennial, yeah. but they're behind so, us. But, but, while, while we're talking about amending the Constitution, yeah. I want to make a plug for my dear friend um, David Cobb. Um, move to amend.org yeah. if you want to learn mm-hmm. about what um, move to amend is doing all over the country yes. um, to um, push this um, to organize for mm-hmm. a constitutional amendment to get money out of politics move to amend.org folks please yeah. check that out yeah. yeah they're great and we've been yeah. working very closely with them on prop 59 and they're great people yeah. And so, folks, mm-hmm. um, we're so happy to have um, Holly here with us today. And we got her here because she happened to be in um, the area working yep. on Move to Amend. Um, mm-hmm. So, well, working on Prop 59. Yep. <laughs> um, um, had she been at home in L.A., she would have had to get in her on her own dime. So if you like what you're seeing today, folks, help us out. $5, $10 is all we're asking. Mm-hmm. Um, the price of a latte. <laughs> um, GoFundMe.com forward, forward slash take. Take back the vote. Again, that's GoFundMe.com forward slash take back the vote. Everything that we've done for our um, conference that you were able to watch live streams all day um, two weeks ago on Friday, on Saturday and Sunday um, came out of pocket for us, and we appreciate all the day night donations that came through for that. Um, we are just about... We are almost um, up to our cost of recovering um, our expenses. Oh, That's excellent. the way that it works, right? Great. Yeah. yeah, you're really good to recuper, yeah. recuperate your expenses in this business, right? And if so. you guys like our film, you know, you guys should link to it and donate for them, you know, whatever you would donate to us. Just do it for the oh, show. Oh, thank you. you know, thank like you so much. Yeah, thank you, Holly. I appreciate forward. that. <laughs> Now, folks, I know that you've seen some great information on the live stream today. If you have any questions for us, we would love to answer them now. Um, so, Holly, I've got a, a question okay. that I'd like to ask for, first off the bat, uh, right off the bat. Who can we volunteer um, on the ground here in these last couple of weeks before mm-hmm. the election to work on, um, uh, to work to try to get um, uh, um, this initiative through? Um, who can, or is there a Yes on 59 group oh, on the 59. ground here? Oh, right. yeah. I mean, we've got regional mm-hmm. coordinators up so and down the state. Tell us how we can get in, in so contact with folks. So just go to yesonca59.com and go to volunteer, and I'll get the email and I'll email plug, you. Plug, plug you in, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you plugged in. So let's in repeat, repeat that. Let's yeah, repeat yes on ca59.com. And sign up to volunteer with us, and we will plug you in wherever you are. And if you want a phone bank for us, mm-hmm. anywhere across the country, the Our Revolution has phone banking every day for California. So come to our phone bank page, and we would love to have you phone bank okay. because California needs your help. If if this movement dies in California, it is going to be a lot harder to get it across. Right. So. Please help us win big and even half an hour of making calls. So that's exciting. So Please. folks from, folks living in Texas, folks yeah, living in New York. Yeah, we have somebody York. from Louisiana volunteering. Yeah, it's, it's and she, like, bank, she's right. been great. Like, so they can yeah. go to ourrevolution.com. Well, right? go to yesonca59.com and our phone bank page, and that has directions to link great. to the Our Revolution. So link to our revolution. Like, get to our page, and then we have the phone bank instructions down there. Fast, folks. You know we're 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 mm-hmm. raw and organic and proud here. Yeah. <laughs> when we get when we get um, more technologically inclined, we'll be able to um, 
post these um, websites for right. you, um, flash them out on our screen. That would be great. Huh? <laughs> right now, you can look in our comment feed, and you can mm -hmm. find all of the um, websites and links that we have um, been discussing here today. So just scroll down the comment um, thread, and if you have any questions about where to find something at the end of the live stream, we're going to turn um, the camera towards our um, whiteboard so that you can have time to uh, get all these links together. Okay? Yeah. So um, we're approaching um, 7 o'clock, are we? Wow, that was fast. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Okay. Actually, we've got 20 minutes still. Oh, so okay. we're going to take a look at all of these links. So again, saveourelections.org, folks. Mm -hmm. You can find a, a free for all, and you can watch it for free and pay to play. Uh, two right? fil two mm -hmm. films for free. So and <laughs> good prop deal. information, uh, prop fifty nine information, you can find at yes on ca five nine dot com, and mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, check into money and politics at moneyinpolitics dot us. Yes. And again, folks. Um, our um, funding page is gofundme.com and Addie is helping us out. Thank you, Vanna White. We appreciate Ooh. that. Take back the vote. All right. Okay. So, um, Holly, mm -hmm. um, what's next for you? <laughs> I'm actually going to take a little bit of a sabbatical. Right on. Right. We like to hear that. Good. I'm very much looking Vacation. forward to the ninth. Um, yes, this last year has taken a lot out of me. With yeah, like it's been it's, it's been a grueling pace. Yeah, hasn't nonstop. It? It's been a grueling yeah. pace. So a little bit of a break, and then I mean we do have one more film we're finishing up about privatization, and again, oh all this juicy, money talk to politics, us about that goes back to that we've been privatizing things that should be in the public good. I mean, look at what happened with Flint and the water supply. Devastating. And that's why you go to the moneyinpolitics.us, like this, I made this, you know, A to Z guide. Mm -hmm. There is water, privatizing water. It's like our safety sure and uh, our, that. you know, it's, yeah. it's imperative. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll finish that film and get that out next year, but a little, you know, now till the end of the year, I need a little. When break. can we expect to see that film come out? So you'll, Sometime you'll finish next year. filming and then we've got to Yeah, we're just edit waiting on one, we're waiting on one more interview about housing. Uh -huh. um, we had not um, looked into that and then somebody gave me a tip that a lot of the public housing has a lot of privatization in it. Yeah. And I thought that was, you know, worth, you know, looking into before we close so. it off. So, sister, mm -hmm. we can make a date from a year from now. Okay. And we can hear about this <laughs> yeah. new film. That and the one exciting scary. thing is, like, look at the Justice Department. They have just decided that privatized prisons are not okay. You know, that was one of the Glory, big topics Hallelujah, in our finally, film. It's right. like, it's finally gotten so dark that they're seeing that they can't even allow this. I mean, I, the, the the jail is one of the, one of the thing that breaks my heart how many people yeah, it seems lives. like it's been it seems like it's been in a 1970 mm -hmm. less than 200,000 people were in prison mm -hmm. and in 2009 it was 1.6 million those aren't just numbers those are people's lives who then when they want to get out and get a job afterwards like you know now we don't have the we've banned the box on the applications but it's like so many there of these are, are nonviolent absolute dearth of programs or, to re-enter for re yeah. programs in the country. And Absolutely. The, and dark. the kids of the, you know, these people's lives are, you know, up, they can't work for years. They've lost all that income and, you know, their families and the kids that are, you know, suffering as a result. This is, you know, saw that's recent, heartbreaking. Yeah, saw a recent interview with Michelle Alexander, and she said it feels like it's been a lifetime <laughs> since um, she wrote the book, The New yeah. Jim Crow, which, of course, is seen as the silent spring of yep. mass incarceration in yeah. this country now. So. And it has, you know, introduced, um, you know, white America yep. um, to the um, cruel reality that we already live in a police state if you're black yeah. and brown in this country. Yeah. Um, with uh, two... Two million people imprisoned. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're five percent of the world's population, right? Yeah. And we house twenty-five percent of the world's prisoners. Yeah. Here in the land of the free. Right. 
Once again, but the issue gonna change. Yeah, that some of us just shook the bushes, yeah. just shook the bushes until yeah. our hands were bleeding. Yeah, you know, and got the message out. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, po- I, I, I have probably posted the newjimcrow.com mm. upwards of a thousand times. Yeah, <laughs> different, yeah. it's so important. Different it's pages, like, yeah. yeah. But we can fix this. Like, this, yeah, we can like fix all it. of this has, like, the one thing I always see, it's like, this has all happened. Because this all became, all this money in politics has influenced began right after the environmental movement with the Powell memos mm-hmm. in 1971. So we're just redoing, going back those 40 years and undoing all the damage that has slowly been infiltrated into our into our system with this corruption. So it wasn't always like this. So we can undo it. And I think yeah. that um, I'm Gen X. I just turned 49. <laughs> yeah, I'm, okay. I'm a Gen X. You're a Gen X or two, <laughs> yeah, right? I'm a Gen X. You know, <laughs> that, what did they ask about us? What's up oh. with Gen X? You know, the lost generation. They had no idea what we were doing. Well, this is what we're doing, folks. We're leading the fight. We're leading the fight yeah. for the most progressive generation yeah. um, since the 60s. Oh, and yeah. I want to give them a run for their money. Yeah. And I got a high yeah. five on that. Yeah. Just and I want right to thank on. all the millennials coming up who gave me so 72% much 72% of which voted oh. for a self-declared democratic socialist. Yes. We're ready. Yeah. The oh, progressive yeah. revolution that we've been dreaming of yep. our entire adult lives yeah. is here. Yeah. We're ready, folks. Yeah. All right, folks, do we have any questions coming in through the live stream? Okay, all right. So once we um, once we post this and get it out um, and give it a little boost, we're probably mm-hmm. going to get quite a few questions coming okay. in. And we'll um, get Holly on the comment thread, okay. and she yeah, can answer any questions. Comment. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. folks, thank you once again. We are coming yeah. to you from Berkeley, California. This is Ballots for Bernie. I'm Lucy Riley. We're here with Holly Mosher. We've been talking about Prop 59. We've been talking about her great film, um, Free For All. We want you to check out our, uh, her website so you can see um, what is going on. And we do have one question coming in. Yeah. So uh, some people want to know about um, the viability of the... Um, Bernie write-in campaign. So this doesn't actually actually have anything to do with what Dear Holly came here I'm, to talk to us about. I'd be happy to, to give my opinion, yeah. but... <laughs> there's a, there's a lot, you know what? We'd love to hear it because you there's know, a lot of people that have been asking questions and are genuinely confused. Yeah, I mean, to me, I would like... I'm so sick of this duopoly. The two-party mm-hmm. system is what I see as the problem. So I would love to see here in California, like, even 5% go green yeah. and get... Like right now, you know, the Democratic Party always just assumes things right. and they come out to California only to fundraise right. and a little bit of like, well, they don't think that's they have any not convincing okay. To do here, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. really to me, it's the two party, like the debates. Why are we hearing two? Vo- it's so ugly with just two voices. Why do voices. we have to depend on democracy now yeah. to give yeah. us the voices of Gary Johnson and Jill Stein? Yeah. 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 So Why do we me, have to go I to Jill really Science would, website to see her live stream yeah. answer? If we don't get yeah. third party growth questions. now, when are we going to get it? This, I mean, I'm in my 40s, and it's like I've voted, you know, green many times as a non, you know, in not being in the party, not in any party. But it's like they don't even mention 0.6 percent voted green. Like we're just ignored. So like if it's actually mentioned this time with you know a significant number behind it. I'll be happy. So I've, get, I've been yeah. I've been thinking both. You know, I've been yeah, playing with both. Stein, if Jill Stein and could I was get like, the 5% of the I was vote. like, no, and that, then they could get some funding because right $10 now, million yeah, dollars and, in and be in funds. those debates, yeah. be in those debates because mm-hmm. that that it's just these two back and forth, us versus them, that ugliness, and that's what the media wants because that's what creates this war. And it's really a war. It's it's this ugliest internal war I've ever seen. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. I mean, I wasn't alive so during the, the Civil War. So, so the, the but. specifics, <laughs> the specifics about the um, one one of the strategies with the write-in mm-hmm. uh, write-in strategy is uh, opt in I two seventy. So the idea behind it is that if um, either establishment candidate um, can be denied the two hundred and seventy electoral college votes needed to secure the presidency, then the vote for the presidency would have to go to the new house, 
Uh, there has been a lot of uh, mm -hmm. controversy about whether it's the old house or the new house, right. but it is, in fact, the new house of representatives, yeah. which we know is dominated by Republicans. And it's very easy to go and Google uh, the electoral map or the election mm -hmm. map right now of what's going on with districts yeah. across the country. And to have a Republican majority in the House of Representatives, all you need is 218 seats. So <clears throat> 538.org mm -hmm. is already projecting a win by double digits in 217 seats. Mm -hmm. All they've got to get, and those are in deep red districts, all they've got to get is mm -hmm. um, one more seat, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in red districts that are all over the country moving towards purple, right? Right. So the chances of them not getting that one more seat mm -hmm. are slim to none. Mm -hmm. So what we know, mm -hmm. what we know is that a... Republican House is never in a million years going to vote for Bernie Sanders right. as our president. Yeah. So the end game already has a fatal flaw yeah. in the Opt to 9 270 yeah. strategy. Yeah. And I wish that I weren't the bearer of bad news. I wish that it were a possibility. Um, um, you know, logically speaking, what we know, mm -hmm. it is the um, it is the hail mary of all long shots. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So whereas Looking at a third-party candidate, even if it were to be Gary Johnson, um, five yeah, percent of the national him. the five percent of the national too. vote yeah. could keep the issues alive that Gary Johnson is talking about, and mm -hmm. a lot of Bernie supporters are now supporting um, Gary Johnson. It's not my particular choice, um, but again, mm -hmm. this is about every voter yeah. being able to have their voice heard and especially through a, a representative that's running yeah. for president. Yeah, and especially in this, I mean, we, we need to be looking at this electoral college system. I mean, this is kind of crazy again, and ridiculous. Per, again, Another thing we need to address. a purposely yeah. convoluted step in yeah. the process, right? Yeah. yeah, so that it goes down to a handful of swing states. Right. It's, you know, and, <laughs> and the convoluted pro process is 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 strategic mm -hmm. because yeah. there's so much wonky information to understand to get to a deep understanding of what's actually happening in the system that most right. people give up yeah. at step one or two of 75 steps yeah. to understand what's happening. So it's a, also a strategy of insidious demise, yeah. you know, like I mean, a prolonged lawsuit, yeah. right, folks? I mean, that's why we need another constitutional yeah, amendment about protecting every single American's right to vote. And um, I think we can get there. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. Because despair yeah. is not <laughs> part of our wheelhouse, right? right? No. <laughs> Commitment. Yeah. 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 Two sides to anger, folks. Bitterness, yeah. bitterness, bitterness and passion. Yeah. And we want to <laughs> invite you to be part of passion. Yeah. So we are, um, as Ballots for Bernie, we are part of the California Election Integrity Coalition. We are working with TrustVote.org. TrustVote.org mm -hmm. um, has okay. got a couple of lawsuits in play right now mm -hmm. that are challenging uh, election results. And uh, lawsuits don't happen cheap, folks. Mm -hmm. Lawsuits yeah. need cash to flow. Um, our um, friend Lori Grace with um, TrustVote, um, has got a great website. You can go to trustvote.org and look at all of the lawsuits that are in play right now and pick your favorite one and donate. <laughs> that yes. $5, $10 times a 1,000 people could go a long way. Um, lawyers don't work for free. We mm -hmm. have a lot of lawyers and that are putting in a lot valuable. of pro, pro, pro bono hours on this. But, you know, you, it's you, valuable. You, you can't get the judge to give you um, free filing fees, right? Right. You know, there's yeah. a lot, lots of cost involved. <laughs> yeah. So, Holly, thank you again, once well, again, so for much for being me. here. It's such, yeah. it's such, I want to give you a <laughs> hug. <laughs> my BCO yeah. sister, my yeah. ballots for Bernie sister. Yeah. And Lauren, mm -hmm. if you're watching us in LA, Hi. Um, thanks so much. I know you're going to put this on blast for us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Folks, thank you once again for tuning mm -hmm. in to another edition for Ballots for Bernie here in Berkeley, California at Next Space. Mm -hmm. uh, join us next Sunday, uh, 5 to uh, 6 p.m. We'll have another live stream for you, um, bringing you the latest and greatest in um, the most progressive news for election integrity. Thanks again. See you next week.